Yes, there has been one best way. If, if you're building a ship, it's a huge capital investment and it requires an ecosystem of supply, you know, the, the engineering supplies, the steel and the engineers and the, the fitting out and all the rest of it. You can't go anywhere else. People have to come to the job. And not only do people come to the job, but they live in the same town. And I grew up in a town where it was dying and it was dying because ships were being replaced by aircraft and the ships that were being built were being built by the Koreans. So when people talk about you know, economic decline. Again, this is another reason why I think I'm so awkward, is I, I think, right, don't talk to me about economic decline. My whole life has been observing the fallout from economic decline. And it's it's not just on one industry, it's on entire communities. It's on entire communities. So, but, 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 so industrialization um, has until quite recently, probably implied one way to do things. But that's not quite true because, and again, say if you look at it from the 80s onwards, there's a, there's a brilliant paper by a guy called Denison, and if, if you're interested, uh, he, actually, he actually predates Alex Osterwalder, who's talking about business model innovation. And in fact, what Denison starts to trace out is how value chains and value networks started to evolve. And that he said, if you looked at, um, this, this, I think this is relevant to what you're talking about. So, so bear with me if you don't mind. Um, that the one best way, lean initially, lean initially was about efficiency. It was about driving out waste but it wasn't about redesigning the value chain. It was about giving the customer what you've always given the customer, but more efficiently, more cost effectively. Then came mass customization and mass customization suddenly was a difference because mass customization was now about choice, consumer choice within constraints. You know, you, you, you want a car with alloy wheels, with different trims, you know, you, you still want a mini, but you can have a souped up mini. So in other words, what you then do is you have all these components in a just in time way. So work in progress is gone. But the whole point is now you're beginning to get, cons you know, consumer choice and choice. So industrialization had started to change. It had started to incorporate diversity. It wasn't just the one best way. And now I think what we've got coming along here is total, you know, diversity in the sense that 3D printing now says that this this throws the whole thing up in the air. But there was, that there's a transition here. So getting back to diversity or um, homogeneity, we had already started to move away from homogeneity about 30 years ago. And, and we, we had, we had, and, and, and again, this is another reason why I wrote the book, because I was sick and fed up of, of, of people not understanding or, or choosing not to see or lessons that had actually happened in that first phase of moving away from rigid industrialization. Industrialization had started to become something else. You know, it, it, it started to become um, more distributed, more uh, diverse and more choice. So that's a long way around of saying diversity, diversity always. And the question then becomes, how does industrialization, and in fact, industrialization had started to do this. It had started to adapt to growing homogeneity, to, to growing um, diversity and increasing customer choice. And so therefore, mass customization was a step along the way. And for mass customization to work, you had to have, you know, you, you, you then had to have um, the buy-in of people and the agility to make these things work. So there's a paradox here because for that for that diversity to be delivered, you had to have a certain amount of compliance with, um, you know, with, 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 with process. But, but, but it was willing compliance. You know, pe people understood that agility, agility in customer service um, and customer focus was why, you know, people were collaborating and collaborating very closely. So 
let me stop here because what I'm trying to work out in my own head is never homogeneity, no. Diversity, yes. But then I think that the interesting question is, how do we then organise? How do we then organise for this diversity? And, and, and what, what, what does that all mean? So I think diversity, yes.